Oh man, these just came out of the oven. They're not cookies, they look like it. These are actually cheese wafers. And boy, howdy are they good, let me tell you. Hey, how's it going? I decided to make one of my favorite recipes. I always do this around the holidays. Um, this is one of those little things I like to just throw together. It is not hard to do. It's a cheese cracker recipe. And the, the ingredients are so simple, it's unbelievable. Got some flour, Rice Krispies. The, by the way, this can be the generic crisped rice. It doesn't have to be brand name anything. I got some uh, salt, some hot sauce. You can use your choice. This, uh, I think I originally made this with Tabasco. This Cholula works really good. I've got some cayenne, cheese, butter. It's not a lot to the recipe. It's really simple. These are a simple cheese wafer. When they're baked up, they're absolutely delicious. They've got, you know, a sharp kick to them from the hot sauce and the cayenne. And at the same time, they're just so cheesy. And the sharper the cheese you use, the more cheesy they get. As a general rule, it's not a real expensive dish. However, there's two pricey items in it. And of course, we're looking at the butter and the cheese. Now, I usually keep plenty of butter around and I buy it when it's a lower cost, lower, se uh, lower cost at a different season. Uh, so during the holidays, I'll have what I need without paying the holiday season price. Um, and I recommend you do that every year. It's just a good idea. Uh, so anyway, I'm gonna get all of this measured up, put in a bowl. I've got to grate the cheese, get my butter in a bowl. And uh, in fact, that's where I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna unwrap these packets. I've had these sitting out on the counter uh, for long enough to come up to room temperature. So they're now room temperature and they're really soft. All right, I've got cheese I need to grate. So. As simple as that. Now I went ahead and cut this block of cheese in half and I'm using an extra sharp cheddar. Um, doesn't matter what kind of cheese you use. It doesn't have to be expensive cheese either. But the sharper the cheese, the better. And uh, an extra sharp cheddar is fantastic. I would not recommend buying an expensive cheese for this. Uh, again, I had around what I had around. This stuff is pretty good stuff. Okay. And the other measurements are pretty simple. So I've got my butter here, got my cheese here. I'm just going to pour up some Rice Krispies. And if you notice that didn't take that long, I've been doing this for just a couple of minutes now. Grating a pound of cheese doesn't take that long. You can also just buy it pre-grated if you like keeping it around that way. Okay, there. And we're down to the flour. Uh, scrape my flour or the excess off I tap it once if there's an air pocket the flour will fall into the air pocket and you'll immediately know that you need to add more flour to that cup so that's how I do that see there no pockets so anyway I just pulled out four cups of flour So as you can see, this ain't that hard. Well, I uh, was putting a few things up, you know, getting the flour put away and the, right, the uh, crisped rice. Right now what I'm doing is pulling some olives out of this jar. And one of the things I like to do, I'll take some of the dough of this recipe and I will wrap it over these olives into a ball and I'll bake them that way. 
So it's like a uh, it's like a cheese ball with an olive in the middle. It's really cool. Now, of course, if you don't like green olives, I guess that wouldn't be for you, would it? So don't worry about it. Okay, anyway, the rest of this stuff is all pretty simple. Uh, I'm not gonna kill myself measuring any of that out. Uh, what I will do is you just go ahead and get this right down in here. And I need about one teaspoon of each of these. So a teaspoon of the sauce, a teaspoon of this cayenne. There we go. Yeah, and if you'll notice, I'm not like using a, a measuring teaspoon. Um, that's because, you know, once you learn how to measure in your hand long enough, you just get good at it. And uh, it's not a problem after that. All right, and about a teaspoon of salt. Now, normally my recipe on this farm member right calls for a teaspoon of salt. And I usually use salted butter when I do everything. This is unsalted butter. So to compensate my recipe that I normally use a salted butter in, I'm gonna add another half teaspoon there. Okay. Now, this has no written recipe to it, uh, and I'm not gonna do that. But uh, later on when we go to cooking this, it's gonna be cooked at 350 degrees. They take about 15 minutes to cook at my altitude, and I'm a couple of thousand feet up right now. Uh, at sea level, you're looking at about 12 minutes to cook, so they do cook fast. All right, it's just a matter of mash it all together, okay? So I got the butter here. Let's put some cheese down in there. And uh, I'll take my ring off here. And get busy mashing. All right. So what I do, I start with, whew, I got my nose. So I start with my butter, working the cheese into it. The cheese is also soft. And then I go at it with the flour. Um, and I don't take too much time in any of this, okay? So don't, don't kill yourself. You just gotta get it mashed together, that's all. flour in there put maybe whoops a third of that in there and yeah sometimes when you're cooking a little mess happens don't worry about it you know you get a little flour that flies here or there normally this is stuff I don't show on my regular cooking show I edit that out but hey this is just about kicking back and having a good time for the holidays right not a big thing Okay, now, there's our flour. So it's coming in together as a nice cheesy dough. All right, this is just what I'm wanting. And sometimes, you know, when it comes to working doughs like this, this isn't one of those times where it's best to use a machine. It's best on this one. Just go at it with your hands. I'll say this, the butter in this is gonna be really good for your hands. For the skin, oh yeah. And you know, in, in West Texas, dry skin is a common thing. And so we uh, take advantage of what we can to help out. Okay, Rice, crisped rice, we'll just get that in. Now on this stuff, you're not looking to mash it so much, you're just looking to get it worked throughout. Okay, so you kind of have to be as well, gentle as possible, we'll say. <laughs> kind of hard to be gentle with this. Well, I have a little visitor down here, a little doggy. Yes. Come here. Want some of that? There you go. Yes. That's very scrumptious, isn't it? Yes. I think you remember that from last year, don't you? So 
So down here on the floor, you can't see her. She's out of the camera shot. That's Abby. She's the one you will occasionally hear barking in the background. There we go. Now I'm going to uh, clean this area up here just a little bit and we'll get on with this. All right, I decided to have a seat for a minute and uh, mostly because my back's hurting. Hey, sometimes you just do what you do, all right? Got some olives here. I got a baking sheet here, several of them in fact. I've got three, uh, excuse me, four here. So what I wanna do is take this, this dough, and uh, I'll tell you what, come up close here. I want you to take a real close look at this. I wanna roll them up, press them flat, and I want you to see exactly what's going on, okay? All right, getting ready to make a ball here. This one is a little bit on the big side. I'm gonna pinch off just a little bit. I'm looking for about three quarters of an inch to an inch. And that right there is right on the button, okay? Perfect. And what I wanna do with these, I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of them. I'm gonna toss them right down there on my, uh, on my pan. And once I get all of these little balls made, then I'll press them flat and we get on with things. So some of these I'll press flat and wrap uh, olives with, okay? And this will be the same exact size ball that I do that with. Once you get going on it, yeah, you can see, it just doesn't take that long. It's not that much work, really. Especially when you consider how many this makes. I mean, this is a, a pretty good size recipe. Oh, and by the way, the measurements on the recipe are so easy, you can easily cut it in half or quarter it. So, <laughs> feel free to make this whatever size batch you want it to be. All right, got all of that dough rolled into little balls. Now, Next thing, this isn't too hard. I wanna take these things, lay them out on a pan and just simply press them flat. I don't need to put anything on the pan to help this release because, well, they're filled with butter, folks, all right? They've got plenty in them that's gonna help them to release. And generally these don't really spread out very much. So you don't have to usually worry too much about them growing into each other um, becoming one, as you've seen happen with cookies, I'm sure. All right, um, come take a little closer look. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Not hard. Oh, and we need to go ahead and pre-eat the oven. So let's start that now. Okay, got that heating. All right, so this is generally what I'll do is just go ahead and fill the pan up and get all of my placing correct. In other words, exactly where I want each one. And it helps it just kind of go a little bit faster is all. Now you could use, I guess, the bottom of glass or you know, something flat to press these flat if you want to. Frankly, my hand seems to be working just fine. So that's what I use. So as you see, hey, <laughs> that didn't take too long, did it? Now get this out of my way as i mentioned we're going to be baking those at 350 degrees it's going to take me about 15 minutes at my altitude all right let's take this put a hole in the middle see there and just take your dough and pack it around that olive i'll do that again so a little hole in the middle put the olive in there a little juice comes out, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. If you want to reform that a bit, go ahead. And those become our specials with olives right there. And that's all you have to do on those. They don't get pressed out. They just get laid on a sheet and baked and they'll kind of flatten a little bit and look sort of mushroom shaped a bit, but uh, that doesn't affect anything. They're still just as delicious. Um, these bake for the exact same amount of time as do the crackers. 
Okay, I have finished rolling them up, pressing them flat, getting them all ready. These over here that are still balls, these are the ones that are with olives. There's a total of 20 of those. On the rest of these, each pan has 20 on them, and I have 11 here. So in all, including the ones with balls, I've got 91 uh, is my total count. So there's a lot here. Uh, so if you were wondering how much that batch made, well, okay, 91 it looks like, or somewhere around there, right? Okay, these are ready to go in the oven. That's where I'm gonna put them now. And um, you can, I'm gonna tell you something, cooking these things, they're kind of temperamental. If you cook on two different levels in the oven, the ones on the bottom might be a little bit lighter, okay? Uh, the ones on top might be a little darker. So you know, decide for yourself whether you wanna cook on one rack, doing them one at a time, or two racks, and risk it. I'm gonna risk it, okay? Here we go. I'll start with one, the rest of them, two at a time. All right, I'm going to set my timer. That's pretty simple. I'm going to set them right now for 12 minutes. I'll check it at 12 minutes, and then they'll probably need more, so I'm going to take care of it at that point. But I always do myself that favor. You know, you... You can't remove the cooking, but you can always keep them in for a little longer. Next thing, I need some cooling racks and some paper towels on top of them. And that way I've got a place to put these when they come out of the oven. Timer, yay. Those things are indispensable in the kitchen. Okay, especially when you're baking stuff like this. Just very hard to do it without it to do it accurately. You know, and I'm one of those that likes to get real specific results. I want all of my crackers to be very close to being the same thing. Um, now, go in with some more. And I'll do this pan and this one. Oh, I'll say this. The aroma, the aroma is intense. It really is. These are absolutely incredible smelling. Beautiful, gorgeous little crackers. Okay. So this is a matter of just go ahead and take them off of your sheet, get them directly onto uh, something to absorb that butter. And also, I'll say this, these, if they're left sitting on the sheet, they can burn on the bottom real easy. So don't do that to them, all right? Get them up off of that. There we go. That didn't take long. And that was exactly 15 minutes and the altitude here is uh, I think somewhere around 2200 feet or something like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's a couple thousand feet. Now when I was uh, in Dallas at much lower altitude and these things would cook, they would take about 13 minutes to get them cooked just right. So hey, a couple thousand feet equals a couple of minutes, right? All right, I'll go and hang out. Folks, it's not hard. Please enjoy these. We'll take a look at them as soon as they're all out and oh, I'll probably have a couple of them before then though. So <laughs> That's my final timer and uh, time to pull these out. The ones on the bottom, they of course didn't brown as well on top. I'll move those up for a moment while I'm dealing with these. I'm going to get these off of this tray and down onto my cooling rack oh yeah these are really nice looking the uh, aroma is just fantastic like i said before the flavor i've already had a couple they're fantastic i love these things these guys they're all out of the oven <laughs> they are so good mm. Mm. you're gonna love these you try them, they're so cheesy. Mm. 
a great flavor perfect holiday treat when you show up at someone's house with these they're gonna think it's so cool and they're gonna want that recipe so be ready folks as you see it's an easy do don't make this hard the recipe isn't complicated the numbers are simple enjoy this recipe i sure will oh and have a good night bye-bye mm. mm -hmm.